Hello, my name is Tim McCarthy from Blackfire Food and we make Belfast's original hot sauces. Um, my background is actually in street art <clears throat> and I did quite a lot of global travelling with my own job in the BBC and working as a street artist and along the way I I suppose fell in love with really spicy cuisines from around the world. Um, spent some time in Nepal, Thailand, Vietnam, Mexico, and a lot of those countries would use chilies um, in their national cuisine, something that we don't really do here in Northern Ireland because we've been traditionally so conservative when it comes to, to food. A um, few years ago, I decided to start making my own chili sauces because I really couldn't find anything I liked in uh, local supermarkets. And what started off as a part-time business has now boomed into almost a full-time business. I have seven sauces in the range, all of which are vegan friendly, uh, gluten free, allergen free, sugar free and salt free. They go from uh, the mildest, which is called the Belfast Redhead, it's got carrots and ginger in it, right through to one of the hottest sauces in Ireland called Pain in the Hole. And we have something for every palate in between. So today what I want to do is uh, show you the process of how I would make a hot sauce. Um, so basically hot sauces can be made with any ingredients whatsoever. I try and use where possible some uh, unusual ingredients, the likes of a little bit of dulles from Rathlin Island adds um, natural salt. Uh, to the sweetness of mangoes and pineapples. Uh, I also use wild garlic and sometimes use rose petals in some of the sauces. But today we're going to make a Mexican style bone fire chipotle. I should point out that all of my sauces are kind of Belfast themed because I'm a very proud Belfast boy and I grow quite a lot of the chili varieties myself that actually goes into these sauces. So today we're starting in Botanic Gardens and I actually have a botanic sauce. This was one of the first sauces and it's green because of the pork. It's actually made with uh, roasted garlic and green peppers. Um, so, bone fire chipotle. Chipotle is a smoked jalapeno, and the reason that it's smoked is because jalapenos are very difficult to dry out. The flesh on them is so thick, so they're traditionally smoked in Mexico, and that obviously adds to the flavor. So I would use these um, smoked jalapenos, these chipotles, as the basis for one of my most popular sauces. It's a great sauce for the summer, great for barbecues. Normally, people put um, sugar, uh, egg, guava extract and so on in top of or even molasses on top of their uh, chipotle sauces to make them sweet. I prefer the savoury style one. It goes so well as a marinade especially on even roast potatoes that come out dark and smoky and caramelised with that lovely chilli kick. So what I do with the chipotle is I start off with some chopped green peppers. That is the basis. Green peppers are great because they add bulk and they add texture to your sauce. Lots of chopped green peppers. I then use for colour, which gives it this lovely brown colour combined with the green peppers, is a bit of beetroot, not for flavour, just simply for colour. So a bit of chopped beetroot goes into that. Um, we have some ancho powder, which is, again, it's a Mexican chilli. It's one of the three um, chilies that make up Mexican holy trinity of chilies. We have some pasilla. And as I said earlier, we have the chipotles, and together these produce a very kind of warming, savoury chilli sauce. So first thing to do, people when they're using dried chilies very often will soak them in boiling water to reconstitute them. I don't because I cook my sauces for between 40 minutes and an hour, and that's boiling water or boiling um, apple cider vinegar from Armagh as we use as a preservative so when it's boiling it actually softens the chilies down and kills any bacteria in them. So the first thing you've got to do is take the stalks off them, watch them your fingers. Seeds are great, seeds and flesh and skin left in a chilli sauce is really nice because it adds that kind of bulk to it and people like uh, that style of chilli sauce, they can see all the bits that have come from the, uh, um, the chilies themselves rather than a very over processed, over pureed. So basically what I do, I would cut my chipotles open, um, that exposes the seeds and that allows the, um, the hot cider vinegar in. Throw a few of those in, I'm not going to tell you how much because that's uh, trade secrets. But this is very, very easy to make at home. And the thing about chilli sauce is they say that the, um, the human palate can only discern three different flavours at once. So if you're making your own sauces at home, try not to be too overcomplicated. Uh, try to have three dominant flavours rather than lots and lots of things going on because your brain and your palate literally can't um, process it. So we've got those in. We've got a little bit of uh, our pasilla. 
Again, it's not a hot chili, but it adds lovely color, and it adds a little bit of background warmth, and combined with the ancho, um, again, it just is the most amazing flavor you can imagine. And it's not a particularly hot sauce. I mean, chilies are measured on the Scoville scale. It's the official measurement for um, measuring how hot a chili is. And if you can imagine your jalapeno, which most people are used to, uh, that would be sort of between two and a half thousand to eight thousand on the Scoville scale, and then you can go right up to three hundred thousand for uh, habaneros, or up to two point two million for the hottest pepper in the world, the Carolina Reaper. So it's very much uh, about personal taste, how hot you want to make this. I kind of make this not too hot because then more people can eat it you know the hotter you make your sauce the fewer customers you have basically it's all the crazies at the top end who can't get things hot enough uh, so what we'll do we've got our chilies in now we're going to take a bit of beetroot don't need too much beetroot because the dye in beetroot is um it's a very strong dye if you put too much in you end up with a red sauce or a purple sauce rather than a brown sauce so chop these and again beetroot's a very very soft uh, vegetable and it does get soft and break down very quickly. So a bit of that in. Arma apple cider vinegar, fantastic product, great local product as well. They're normally making alcohol but when they're making apple cider vinegar it's put two through, through two fermentation processes. The second one actually kills off the alcohol so it's, um, it's safe for people who don't um, take alcohol basically. Great preservative as well. We use about 35% uh, um, apple cider vinegar in, in all of our sauces to give that lovely acidity and acidity combined with uh, fruit is just it's just such a perfect combination and it adds to the shelf life as well With lots of apple cider vinegar and the mother way into it Okay, so what I'm going to do now I've got a good mix going in here is I'm going to blend it up a little bit Once you've blended it down to the consistency you like, you can then boil it. And what I do when I boil it for about 40 minutes, there'll still be lumps and bits and pieces in it. So then you put it through a strainer and it's ready to decant into bottles. Very important to sterilize your bottles first uh, because the last thing you want in a bottle or in the cap of a bottle is bacteria. But you can do that with the likes of a baby bottle, Milton, or there are other brands available, uh, sterilizing fluid after putting them in the dishwasher first. So once you cook that down, basically, strain it off. And then simply put it in a jug when it's hot, make sure it's over kind of 90 degrees and decant it into your bottles. And this is what we used to do, everything by hand, we're slightly more automated now, but um, this is how we used to produce our bottles, hand labelling. And uh, you've got yourself a lovely bone farge potley sauce, fantastic added to anything with beans, any Mexican dishes, or as I said earlier, a marinade for potatoes. Or we've discovered recently, one of our customers said, try it in tomato soup. It gives it a whole different level with tomato soup. So this is our entire range of sauces. We have two more in production. We have a very posh sauce coming out called the BT9. Um, it's aimed at the kind of uh, people with disposable income and uh, the pearl necklaces. And uh, we've been asked to produce something kind of suppose very unique so it's going to be a black sauce it's going to be based on edible charcoal there's a few other bits and pieces in there which we're not going to uh, tell you at the minute but it will be released this summer and it's going to be a limited edition pure black sauce in a black bottle and it feeds into the whole black fire brand People always ask how easy it is to grow chilies here in Northern Ireland and the simple answer is you can, it, it's very achievable. We're obviously very close to the Arctic Circle here and we are restricted by the varieties that we can grow. There are some that have been developed for our climate, the likes of Prairie Fire and so on. And you can pick chilli plants up at most of the big uh, garden centres now that you can grow on a windowsill. If you want to grow anything hotter you will need a polytunnel or lights or trying to replicate those conditions of the countries that those chilies come from, like the northern India or the Caribbean. But um, most of the stuff we use, we grow ourselves. We have a site now in Cornwall because we grow over 20 varieties of chilies. Um, if anyone is interested in any of our products, obviously you can get them off our website. Um, we're here because we're doing the virtual Mela. Uh, we can't meet in person. So here's hoping that uh, we get to catch up next year. And if you have any questions at all about either making sauce or growing your own chilies, please feel free to get in touch via our website.